All right, very good. I'll call the meeting to order, please. Thank you. Uh, you've got attendance. I took some attendance. Any public participation? No one that's here. Seeing none. Very good. Uh, the schools, most of them will be joining remote. I spoke to Doug earlier, just a heads up. So um, we can go into the budgets, I would say, uh, if you're good with that, Steve, Kevin, the uh, group health insurance and human services. I, I think that um, we're the Board of Health and the, the health directors here. Why don't we start with them? Okay, and that's which one? That's um, the second item on the agenda. I believe. Yeah, tw uh, budget 26. Understood. Very good. We'll yeah. do that. So, um, Steve, you sent a letter, a memo. The yeah. folks should have should have seen the memo. Uh, give some highlights of a number of pieces of information for tonight. Uh, Kevin, do you want to cover the budget? And um, then if we have a subcommittee rep to speak about it. Yep. yep. Uh, do a quick overview. Um, the Health and Human Services budget for fiscal 25, we're recommending an increase of 117000 $870. This breaks down under personal services. The increase is $114,220, which includes contractual and negotiated increases. Uh, there is one clerical position that um, will be increased when that contract settled. Um, we also included a part-time prevention and wellness coordinator that was previously paid for out of a grant um, the total for fiscal 25 is uh, $48,661. Also, there is no op or offset uh, for next year. Um, in the current year budget, um, we, we did in, include an offset from op of $50,000. Uh, for the salaries, what we'll also be off, uh, offsetting the salaries by $100,000 from the opioid settlement fund same as the current year. Under contractual services, the total increase is $3,650. This uh, increase is for the intermunicipal agreement between Melrose, Wayfield, and Stoneham for the cost sharing of the services of the director, public health nurse, and the senior health inspector. Total budget request for fiscal 25 is $507,762. Uh, we do collect some revenue in this department approximately $50,000 a year. Okay. Um, is there a subcommittee? Do we have a subcommittee for this, Steve, or not really? I, I, I don't believe so, no. Okay. Good. We did but, uh, the health director um, probably has some few words he would like to say. Yes, please, okay. go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you to the Finance Committee. Um, just wanted to give a couple quick updates on um, this year. Um, we were able to join with the town of Stoneham um, in, on January 1st, 2023, to make our region from two to three towns uh, and a share of the health department resources. That's resulted in a great partnership. Uh, we were able to apply for uh, several more grants. That's given us a couple opportunities to do more um, for the community. Um, some of the highlights were that we were able to pass with the Increase investment by the town and the finance committee in our resources. We were able to pass body work regulations that were updated for this year. Um, we were able to respond efficiently to uh, immigrant families coming to the town of Wakefield for about a week and a half. Uh, we were able to leverage our resources here in Wakefield, but also in our several other communities that we're partners with um, to respond effectively. Um, this uh, September of 2023 marked the end of a successful 10 year. Um, drug-free communities grant that resulted in a in the wake-up coalition and many other resources that are devoted to youth and, uh, and schools and wellness um, with a focus on substance use prevention and mental health and behavioral health services those activities continue uh, to be part of our um, part of our mission moving forward um, the board of health and you know uh, and through work from our health department was able to pass a historic um, change uh, nicotine free generation, which was a policy that was passed uh, just about a month ago um, by the Board of Health. Um, this is a policy that looks to uh, move us towards a tobacco free generation. Um, it is it was first passed in Brookline and now Wakefield becomes only the second Board of Health in the state to pass this um, novel policy. 
Um, because of our work with the three towns, we were uh, honored with the, the Kenneth E. Picker and Mass, Mass, Mass Municipal Association Innov Innovation Award this year. Um, we were able to demonstrate that we were able to share services effectively, create high, um, increased capacity in all of our fields, environmental health, public health, nursing, and substance use prevention. And we were able to fulfill all of our contractual um, needs. In terms of environmental health, we were also able to, because of the increased investment in um, inspector hours, we were able to move from the standard um, two inspections per establishment across the board to the FDA best practices uh, risk one through four scale, which meant that we were able to do more inspections over the course of the year, which allowed us to uh, ensure that food safety was being followed and uh, also accommodate the increased number of housing uh, housing calls we've been receiving because of the expansion in Lakefield. I just want to say, and also, um, it may not have a budget impact, but I also wanted to mention that um, Laurel has had a major impact on the Board of Health. Uh, Laurel is uh, ending a 15-year run with the Board of Health. Uh, I want to say a big thank you uh, on, on behalf of the town and our department. Um, Laurel's contributed a lot um, to the town. She's looked out for us, COVID only being the most recent contribution. But for many years, Laurel's looked out for the health of the town, and we, uh, we owe her a great deal. Wow, thank you, Mante. I just want to add, well, first of all, it's been a pleasure, and thank you. Um, just to remind us where we were 15 years ago. We were a very small department. We weren't really showing up regionally, and now we're pretty much the, the you know, really the demonstration project of an awful lot of progress in public health. In this tenure that I've had, you know, it's interesting if you look at mass municipal laws and what boards of health are supposed to do, it's still very inspectional driven by definition, you know, inspection and, and public health nursing. Our whole prevention side and this expansion of the social services aspect is incredibly impactful. We know, you know, we get, we get reports all the time that Jason Stone, who's you know been with us the least amount of time, has been um, utilized in a really impactful way. And I just think, you know, Wakefield should be proud. I know that the budget is is up a little bit, but you know, it's because in fact, the really hard work that people have done um, to get those original grants really set us up well for the structure and the whole, you know, the whole intention of things like the CADCA grant that we had for youth risk behavior um, put us in a great place to then say, you know, hey, we're worth it. We're showing you that we're worth it. And so that is now part of our budget. It was invisible before because it was funded by the grant. And so I think that I really do believe that the health department is one of the most efficient bang for your buck products the town has. <laughs> Maybe I'm biased, <laughs> but thank you. Anthony, can Great, you talk very a good. Bit about the new grant? There's a grant that just you got with the, because of the coalition that is really being used in the schools. Yeah, talk about yeah, it yeah. on Monday night. Um, there, were, there was a grant, the Stop School Violence Grant. We received this just over a year ago. So we're entering, we're, we've, we've entered year two of this grant. Um, it's the Stop School Violence Grant. So this focuses on restorative practices. This is a large focus on youth and mental health. Um, we have partnered with Melrose. So Melrose applied on behalf of the three towns. We were able to receive this grant. It's a million dollars over three years. We've been able to fund one adjustment counselor um, in each school district for the full three years. Uh, we are eligible to reapply for this grant. Uh, we've seen you know, great early returns on the adjustment counselor, increasing our capacity at the schools to work with students in need. Um, and we're hoping to implement other school safety uh, measures as well through this grant. So an, an example of the regional, the regional um, setup being very helpful for applying for grants. Uh, we're also still in, uh, in, in the midst of a um, three-year grant with the six towns that we're in, so Melrose, Wakefield, Stoneham, Malden, Medford, and Winchester. Um, we, we, uh, Melrose is the host, but uh, all, all of us participate in this grant. It's an environmental health-focused grant. Um, this has increased our capacity for training for our inspectors, standardizing our inspections across the board, giving best practices, providing uh, funding for opportunities to go to conferences to learn, um, and also increasing our capacity for inspection. So hiring regional staff that can come out and 
um, help accommodate with some of the growth in our communities. Um, more businesses, more housing, more, more complaints coming in, we're able to uh, eventually be able to accommodate that with this grant uh, from the Department of Public Health state level. Okay, anybody else from the department? Oh, Candace would like to pop in. Candace, please go ahead. Thanks, everybody. I'm Candace Linehan. I am one of the members of the Board of Health. Um, I'm not going to take up a lot of your time. I think Laurel and Anthony made some excellent points. I continue to be very proud of the work we do on the Board of Health, not only the health services, but also the human services. Um, I think we have a great group of people um, doing really important work. Um, I know other towns don't do it like we do, and um makes me feel great about being a part of it. Um, I think the the budget from my view, um, it makes sense. Uh, it feels responsible. Um, I think that the additional increase um, is prudent. I think that that role is important for our, for our town. Um, yeah, um, I appreciate you guys and your thoughtful care in looking for the budget. Very good. All right, I'll open up for questions. Steve, anybody uh, either in the uh, in the room or um, I can Dan see Dan. Dan has his hand up. Dan's okay. got his hand up. <laughs> Excellent, Dan. Go for it. So I'm trying to understand a couple of things. One is he said it's a small increase in budget, and I'm looking at a hundred plus thousand dollars on a four hundred thousand dollar budget. That's not small. So what fifty seven percent increase in personal services? I get the new position. I understand that, and the fact that we're we're not getting uh, our funds, fifty thousand, so one hundred fifty thousand dollars. But the opiate settlements, hundred thousand. How long is that going to last? Longer than your forecast goes. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Wow. Okay. It's disbursements about fifteen. It is over the course of fifteen years. Fifteen years. Yeah, it's longer than my forecast. Yeah. When did it start? Last year's budget, I think we had it in. It was in 24. It was in, in this year's budget. Yeah, it's in 24. So it's the first year? Uh, this would be the second this budget. 25. 25. Five is the second. 25 is the second. Yeah, okay. So we got a ways to go. Um, my concern is not just with your budget, because you're adding a person. Everybody seems to be adding a person. We've gone from roughly 450 full time employees. We're now up to almost 500. And if you stick around long enough, you'll hear me say that we are short a million dollars for 25 budget. We'll short a million five for 26. We can't sustain that. So uh, I understand the need, I get that, but I'm really concerned about all the people we've been adding. It's a problem. It's a big problem because we, we can't keep doing this. We're gonna run out of money and down the road and not too distant future. Um, we're spending it like drunken sailors, and we, we can't keep doing that. Um, I'm glad to hear that the opiate's going to continue because I could see another $100,000 increase on top of increases next year, and that would just be an absolute killer. Um, other than that, I really don't have any questions. Back to you, Jim. No. I think Doug had his hand up. Uh, Doug Butler? Yeah. Uh, quick question. I don't know if I assume the folks on the thing can hear me. Um, you mentioned a, a grant that was running out that was like at the end of the 10 year run. Yes, the end of September 2023. Oh, we did. It did run out. Now, is that, that the in the new is. budget as well? So you're continuing the programming. We're just right. paying for exactly. ourselves now. Okay. That, so, in that regard, uh, then I assume that we wouldn't be bumping so much next year. Like, this is a huge, right. this is a, you know, this was a 10 year well funded program. It is running very smoothly and this is the investment to continue that work so there shouldn't be this won't be the ask next year right. this is you know i think it's just important to, to mention that it's kind of like the safer grant doug we got to take the hit at the end <laughs> we let me or, start or, or we let him go or we let him go yeah but and this isn't really a cool. new position it's really just a, a shifting of who's going to pay for it right yeah right all right um Cool. Oh, oh, no. oh, yeah, no, I put those by. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, not in relation just to this budget, but across the board to that point, as all of these grants are expiring, mm -hmm. it does feel like 
you know, that we've gotten used to the programming, but then all of a sudden our costs are going up exponentially. Right. I know that goes without saying, but it is becoming a bigger and bigger hit globally for the right. town. For, for the yeah. town school side, yes, absolutely. Yes, so it, it's a crunch. This, this is a I know I'm stating yeah. the obvious, but right. I just feel like I have to state right. it because it's, it's, it's not right. just like, I feel like we're honing in on no. these folks, but I think it's like, I felt like several departments have come in, grants have been expiring and they're not being replaced with other grants but, of similar um, amounts. Not for lack of trying. Oh, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. I just yeah. think it's a function, I think to Dan's point, like at some point, some decisions will have to be made. Well, some already were. We've, we've cut capital a couple hundred thousand yeah. dollars and we cut $400,000 from the OPEB contribution. Oh, prudent. Um, the, the, oh, sorry, sorry. I lying. remembered my question now. <laughs> um, <thank you. laughs> uh, the the $100,000 that's about the uh, nonviolence in schools. Um, and so how long does that grant run for? And is it one person who's going to, is it all three high schools? I, I, don't, I didn't know which schools they were going sure, to. Yeah, so the we're in year two now, so we have one more. So it's fiscal year 25, so it ends in fiscal year 26. Okay. Uh, the grant as it stands. Um, each school district has one adjustment counselor. So here in Wakefield, they focus primarily on the middle and high school, I believe. The, adjust, the one adjustment counselor here in this district is mostly middle and high school, I believe. Okay. And 33 grand or whatever, or did no, it's 100. 100. Oh, we each, got a hundred. Each, got 100. Got, each of us got a hundred. Yeah. Each stone them. Correct. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. So the hundred covers them. If one assumes. Right. Yes. So is, is there any charge back to the other towns or they just have their own health and room services and you guys just coordinate? There's no money exchanging, no money moving between towns, right? The three of you, three of us. So Melrose is the host. So um, so myself, the senior inspector, and the senior nurse, um, I, they're charged in Melrose, and then they send an invoice to to Wakefield and Stone on each this budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this budget. So yeah. And the, and the break. This is just us. What's in front of this us. budget is just us. Yeah. us. That's us. That's our, and what and included that is what we pay Melrose for the shared space. Right. Thirty percent yeah. of thirty percent. Same of as Melrose. before. Same as before. Yeah. Okay. No change. Well, you said you added stone them, so I thought, oh, it's something. Oh, sorry. No, it actually yeah. distributed the cost yeah. now. Okay. Adding stone them actually brought our costs down a little bit. Got it. <clears throat> Dan, you good? Laurie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Others. No hands. No hands. Um, I, I would just echo uh, Dan's interpretation of the uh, staffing and the budget in the sense that uh, the continuing adding of people, you know, between 450 and 500, as Dan describes, um, we, at least before tonight's meeting, or, or at some point looking at the forecast, you know, we were able to cover it and still remain within our uh, prescribed 10% of reserves. That certainly doesn't sound like that's the case, you know, at the conclusion of tonight or next year either, correct, Dan? Yeah, yeah, we got about three years, so they will drop below 10%. Okay. Yeah, but these are your three big inflation years that you're getting for all uh, can, salaries. Yeah, I can go through the- Yeah, no, there's no doubt about that. I, I, I just want to echo it, I've been, you know, looking at it, Dan's very helpful with the information, and uh, I don't always say it, but I just want to make clear, I, I'm, I'm not concerned about this budget. I'm concerned about all of our budgets and the amount of FTEs that the town is taking on. That's all. Thank you. Uh, um, Stefan, question? Um, yeah, I just wanted to reiterate um, a comment that I made uh, last week um, in that uh, at the end of the fiscal year, the town council decides not to increase the tax rate to the maximum allowable uh, allowable level and that's further exacerbating the issue thank you anybody else all right staff that was there and uh, those that attended appreciate, appreciate your input thank you thank you thank you thanks guys thank you guys for coming thank you everyone that's yep. All right. Um, so we'll back next year if you want to do it. <laughs> want to pop up to write me um, health insurance? Go yeah, group health insurance, budget number 46. 
Thank you. Uh, Brooke Health Insurance. Excuse me, Steve, uh, just two, two things. Uh, obviously, all these budgets were voted on and approved by town council earlier this week. Yes, all were approved by town council. Um, and uh, I believe, I believe, I'll have to go through my notes. I believe unanimously. Yeah, that's fine. And I'd, then, have to, I'd have to check with one of them. I thought, I thought Ed was against on the. Oh, yeah, one. just uh, oh, maybe, the, maybe on this one. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 the and point like that, five to two on this one. Yeah, five yeah. one yeah. on this one. Health and Human Services was unanimous. So. Right, yeah. and just uh, I should have said it earlier. We we likely won't vote on the full budgets tonight. I had canvassed everybody. We'll likely do it next Wednesday, seven o'clock, unless this meeting moves miraculously quick. So just so you know that I should have said that. That's our hope. <laughs> I don't feel it. Uh, group health insurance. We, go through well, well, we, went, we went through it last week, I think, um, with, with the presentation. Um, right. Uh, but I put it on here because uh, I think Dennis asked the question, um, wanted to wait for uh, town council, but they said town council did vote to approve that budget. Um, and uh, I, I think that uh, group group insurance has been a pretty much of a success story. I just, uh, o over the years, and thank you, I know uh, Dan Sherman's been involved in it a lot over the years. Um, and uh, we can answer any questions on that, but um, I think we made a pretty big presentation last year, Jim. Last week, last meeting. Yep. This one wasn't unanimous. It was Vulcan Trump? It was not, yeah. Okay, so group health insurance. Uh... What are they going to do? <laughs> uh, on the personal service. Personal service. Oh, there was yeah. a, there's an additional, additional FTE, oh, okay. but very necessary. Okay. What that it's fine. Was I just was more like that. Yeah. Pretty good. Huh? <laughs> not health insurance. Was just sorry, Doug, what is the dialogue there, Doug? I'm not sure. Oh, no, sorry. I was wondering what the two votes against were in terms of, or one vote against on the group health insurance. I wasn't sure if we could opt not to fund yeah. health insurance. <laughs> yeah, so there, there was a request for delay and explanation of the HR coordinator, which is a new position at $65,500. Oh, that I, yeah. yeah, I heard that the other day. That was yeah. the issue. Yeah. Okay, uh, Don. Yeah, I'm mute. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, when I uh, was attended the uh, town council meeting uh, a few weeks ago when they first brought up the issue, one of the issues I, I think um, that was of most concern was whether or not the HR um, budget should be commingled with the group health insurance budget or it should be broken out separately. So I don't know if that came up again at the town council meeting on Monday, but that, that did not come up. Okay. So what was that dialogue? Sorry, Don. So it's <laughs> the, um, those HR positions um all showing up as part of the group health insurance budget rather than a separate hr department so i think uh one of the counselors who was concerned about this initially um felt that the the two budgets didn't belong together that the group health insurance should be separated and its own budget and the other one should be uh the staffing for the health and the the human resources functions great All right. Uh, it thank you, John. Separately in the recommendation. What was that? No. Okay. No, I was asking Kevin a question. <clears throat> Joseph. <clears throat> yeah, I just um, wanted to reiterate what Dan said earlier. I tried to get in earlier, but I missed the click here. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, we're adding another position here. We added one in the last one. And as the liaison to the Capital Planning Committee and for Capital Outlay, we were told to cut two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars off our budget. I think this is terrible policy to be adding employees and cutting capital. I just want to make that point made. I am I am I just don't understand it. And it's it's and looking at the future things we're going to be talking about. I think there's two other full time employees. We can't keep this up, and and we're not going to do it by cutting capital. That's the worst thing to do. So I just wanted to make that point. 
Right. Thank you. Anybody else on the uh, group health in the HR? Don's hand is up. Don's hands are still up from last time, probably. I think. <laughs> Ed, I see you're on. Thanks for joining. Um, all right. Do we want to move then to um, vocational schools? Is it at six o'clock? Yeah. Uh, the vocational school budget for fiscal 25, we're recommending an increase of $306,540. This increase breaks down. The increase to the Northeast Regional Assessment is $332,040. That's further broken down. Uh, $76,329 is for operations, and $255,711 is for the, an increase in the, their debt service, where they are borrowing to build a new school up there. Uh, that dollar amount will continually increase over the next several years. Uh, the Minuteman Regional, we, will, we have no students there this year. I'm anticipating no students there next year also. For Essex North, the decrease is $20,255. At the beginning of this year, we had 11 students there attending. Uh, we had 10 budgeted. Luckily, two of them moved halfway through the year in December. Uh, bringing our total to nine. Uh, two will be graduating at the end of this year, which will bring us down to seven. The fiscal 25 budget, I, I budgeted eight students at uh, Essex North. Uh, so that, that's the small increase of $20,255. Uh, same thing with transportation, less students, less cost. Uh, transportation line item is down $5,245. Uh, this budget here, it, it, it's tough to predict. Uh, you, you don't know the actual head count at the, the various schools until uh, school starts in September. So uh, this is best guess that best guess at the moment. The total budget request is two hundred two million five hundred fifty eight thousand four hundred eighty five dollars. Kevin, what was that? Um, number of students at the VOC approximately now? 101. Thank you. And they're budgeting in the same for next year. For next year. Yeah. Thank you. And Kevin, for clarity, you said something about the debt services included. I mean, this is a 13% increase overall. Uh, do you say the debt service is a big chunk of that or not? That's that's correct. Uh, the debt service amount uh, that's being increased from 24 to 25, the increase is $255,711. And, and that's going to go up year over year. Right. Yeah, Jim, I included um, the debt, the best guess on debt service uh, for 26 and 27 in my forecast. Yes. Great. Thank you. Questions for the group? Is there anybody else on to speak about it? No. Okay. Oh, Doug. I've got a question. Uh, why did we only increase, like, it seems like there's at least two students every year. Why did we only do it as one? For Essex North? Yeah. I've spoken to Essex North several times, and where we're out of district, mm -hmm. they, it's a lottery. Right, they don't really want us in there. Well. And you have the, to, you have, yeah. You have to interview, and, and it's, I, I was told, you're lucky if you get one student in, you hit the lottery if you've had if you get two in in the same year. Okay. We've had years where we've had three, so we hit the lottery a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> do we, I mean, overall, do we think the growth in students, like, are, do we have more seniors graduating than we have eighth graders moving into high school? Probably a good question for schools. <laughs> um, because that would be how I do the Vogue, is what percentage, you know, that we have, like, if we have... 270 kids graduating eighth grade. I think it works that way because at the book, you have to elect to go in and here in your public schools, right. you're in automatically. So it's a little different. But I think the, right. the odds are the, if I would say the way you'd forecast is you'd say, what are our, what are the percentage of the eighth graders that end up going? Maybe, well, maybe the other way to say out of all the people who apply to, to, to and seniors to leaving. Yeah. 
uh, oh, 20%. Oh, so there's 20% more eighth graders than there are seniors in Wakefield schools. Yeah, That's, my point is that what if from you, yeah, you yeah. lose me, so private school? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I was noticing that, that it was pretty consistent. All right. I mean, yeah. it doesn't yeah. matter. I mean, we got to figure it out. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. this is fine to get to his test. That's gone. It's a good guess. There's a lot of things you don't know. You don't know the final chapter 70. You don't know bus from the state at this point that is going to that they're going to get so you don't know local are you right at the table there we don't, we don't know anything <laughs> we don't know anything yeah we're good <laughs> we're hey, ryan has his hand up <laughs> ryan does have his hand up thank you ryan <laughs> and he's <laughs> unmuted <laughs> so kevin yeah you're that saying that yeah, so. yeah. kevin you know. you're saying that uh 76 percent yeah, of the right. uptick right. from the northeast right. regional right. school right. is because right. of Yes. Uh, debt service. Seventy six thousand three twenty nine. Seventy six percent of the three. <laughs> no, no. Of the three thirty two. Seventy six thousand three twenty nine was the increase for operations. So. Okay. So you, you look at it split in two different areas. One is the increase for the uh, capital debt service. That that increase from last year to next year. I'm, I'm sorry. From this year to next year, the debt service the increase is two hundred and fifty five thousand. For and then there's seventy seven thousand for their budget. But but yeah. as it as it pans out, you you are correct. Seventy six percent of the increase is because of debt service as a percentage. And then <laughs> and then the rest of it doesn't have anything to do with um, more students. It, it's literally just a rise in fees. Is that what I'm hearing? Costs, costs, the rising costs. Yeah, because the student count is staying the same from the current year that we're in now to next year. So it's there's no change there. One hundred and one. Wow. So that's that's a lot of of non-student count related uptick. Yes. And it's going to get bigger. Yes. And it's going to get bigger. It's four percent. It. Eighty thousand on a. Two million dollar budget. I mean, that's not that. If we got four percent from the rest of them, we'd be psyched. <laughs> Brian, you good? Yep. <laughs> Don. Yeah, it's just kind of for informational purposes. What's the per student cost? at the vote compared to the per student cost at uh, in Wakefield. I was just trying to crunch those numbers and I couldn't do anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> Someone would tell me that answer. I can do that for you. Thank you. So it's uh, 23,710. So the, the 23,710 though, does that include the debt service amount? Or that do you includes the debt service amount. Yes. Okay. Including the debt service, it's twenty three thousand roughly. For the vote for hundred and one kids. Good. We don't handily know the wake up. I had doing the people. Lee would be the keyword there. Yeah, that's yeah. fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to do. I'll get to you guys. Nineteen, about nineteen twenty thousand without the debt service. Nineteen eight. So for for Wakefield, I I would just look at the high school. Yes. Right. Oh, then Virginia got admin. That makes a little more. So school committee members, <laughs> how much per person? <laughs> Same. Yeah, same. <laughs> so the question is, what is the cost? What is the cost per pupil at, at the Wakefield? So yeah. It's going to be separate. I know. Do Do you want me to chime in? Hi, Christine. Yes, I, I I was I was waiting our turn. Thank you. <laughs> We're almost nineteen thousand per student. It's on the Desi website. Okay. That's across all, all, all grades? Across all grades, yes. Yeah. So if you factor out the high school, 
make it comparable apples and, uh, and apples? Still 19? Uh, yes, De Desi doesn't do it by grade level. It's per pupil allocation because it costs to run the district. Right. That's the problem. Is you, have, you can't take the district costs and add it to the high school. That doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Vocational schools are always higher anyway. Yeah. yeah. Probably Vocational right. school, schools historically are always higher. Yeah. Right. So I guess Dawn, does that help? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I was just trying to get a get a sense of what it looked like. Great. Okay. Any other questions on the VOC? Seeing none. All right, we'll move on. That brings us to the uh, the high school, uh, the school's budget, I'm sorry. And I know there's some folks in the room and obviously Christine and Doug are online with others. Christine, who's leading or Doug, who's leading? Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having us again. Very good. We, we, presented, uh, we don't have a, we've already presented our, our budget to you. Yep. Happy to answer any questions that the group might have at this time. So the book we received a week or two ago is the same. Is that correct? It is. Yep. The only thing that's changed, we learned today that Chapter 70 um, has gone from $30 per pupil to $104 per pupil. That's good news. It's very good news. Yeah. I, I, I let, me, let, house, let me let me let me temper that. That's the house. <laughs> That's the house. I, I do like it. <laughs> um, I um, when you also look at it, they've also played a little bit of games with the um, out of school reimbursement and stuff like that that they always do. But <laughs> the bottom line is that it looks like we're receiving with this budget around two hundred grand more than we did on the governor's proposal as a net. So uh, I'm not too happy that they cut unrestricted local aid. Um, by about 80 grand. I like that back um, with the 104 per students. I think they could look the other way other than just taking it away from cities and towns and getting, frankly, a sound bite that they increased chapter 70 and, um, you know, but, but took a little bit out of your other pocket when they did it. So, but it's certainly better than it was. Hmm. Great. So again, you had spreadsheet items, you had the book, uh, everybody on the call. So I, I think you're just looking to have questions uh, for Doug and Christine. I have one that popped up from today. Um, that's okay, Jim. Go ahead. Yes, uh, yes, sorry, go ahead. No, no. Um, so we are heard earlier from Health and Human Services about this Stop the Violence grant. Now, is that, I just want to make sure, we're not, we're not putting that in both columns. Like, it's not, it's not budgeted to the schools and budgeted to Health and Human Services. It's not budgeted to Health and Human Services at all. It's oh, okay. The it's full. It's they full just grant. got the grant and then right. they gave and it to the schools. The position, why I understand it is the position is at the schools and it's, Funded through the grant. That is correct. correct. That's correct. Yeah. Um, and that has one more year left on it. So I guess that's the big question for you, Doug. Is is this something? One of the things that's been popping up is the you know Dan's talked about it. The explosion of overall employees at the town level and, and at the schools. But thinking about it. Is this a position that if we were not to get the grant for, would you keep that person off? Doug, I think that depends on the caseloads that are being served. And can we, could we manage with the staff we have um, looking at the caseloads as we work throughout the year? Okay. Are there many fights in the high school? Like fighting has gone down so much over the last 30 years. Like most kids are never in a fight now. And even the, then, kids like me used to get beat up. I stand to the front of the high school. Yeah. I, I, well, there's a lot of fights in my high school. There are. Oh, yeah. There are not. There are not. But that's my high school, not my field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I'm yeah, just saying, yeah, this, yeah. this massive yeah. decrease in violence that you're seeing. Yeah. I, you're not seeing that. Okay. Doug Lyons, what are you going to say? 
I was just going to say there are not many fights at um, Wakefield Memorial High School. Now that's a sound bite. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Any questions on the budget uh, before you for the uh, school system? Ed, Ed, Ed got his hand up before me. Thank you, Ed. Uh, just one question. So I did see the uh, House Ways and Means um, numbers on Chapter 70. Um, didn't see anything about circuit breaker. Was there any information on the circuit breaker um, program from the House? Uh, I didn't see anything online. I'm just curious. Ed, I, I can chime in. Um, Ed, I didn't see that yet online. I was waiting for Desi, how they update the cherry sheets. But they, they've um, funded Circuit Breaker in their house budget, but it hasn't dramatically changed. So if you notice in our budget forecast for next year, we've level funded our Circuit Breaker reimbursement for next year. Okay. Thank you, Christine. You're welcome. One question I wasn't clear. Sorry. Is there somebody else? Go ahead, Jim. One question right now. So the uh, covering the health budgets, uh, that Steve went to uh, one of your meetings for last fall, let's say. I thought I read you were you were covering half again. You know, earlier the. Can you clarify what you what you were covering for health coverage associated with? I think it might have been school lunch program or, or one of the groups. So in the budget narratives, um, it speaks to the food service revolving account. Um, right. I'm sure, you saw the forty five additional pages that we expanded on our forecast for not just to 25, but up to 27. We have talked about reimbursing, again, this needs school committee approval. Doug and I still need to bring this to school committee, but we had talked about funding um, the health costs for food services for this year that we're currently in fiscal 24. And then we would see where we're at for 25. Again, um, we still, um, Kevin Gill gave us some projections of what that number should be, but we're still kind of going back and forth and auditing and vetting. We've had a lot of changes in that staffing this year. Um, it's been a little hard to maintain some food service staff, but so we're, we're vetting the numbers and then we'll bring it to school committee for a discussion. But yes, Jim, you're spot on it. It was in the budget book and we have been talking about it since last year. Right. It's and that would be well. The talk is about possibly full coverage. Is that right? Well, the the first the talk we have to bring is for this year for fiscal twenty four. Right, finishing the the you agreed to half, possibly covering the rest for this year. Is that we right? We agreed to half last year in twenty three. Yes. And this year we said we we could we would, um, see. We would see where we stand. Yes. Our balances are still healthy, but we'd still need okay. to vet what the actual number is, um, because it has gone up. And then we need to bring that to school committee. Got it. Okay, I got a couple other questions. I'll wait and see from uh, uh, if there are others first. So, um, as long as there are questions as well. Well, you can go first. No, I mean, just... Okay. Um, I don't want to jump in here. No, no worries. Um, so I, I have a couple questions, um, and the really follow up, Christine, to what um, you and I had gone back and forth with. Uh, this afternoon, and the second question you had asked, I had asked about um, the increase in the base salaries for all the teachers, and it was I don't remember the exact number, it was something like a, a eleven percent increase. If you just add up the base numbers, you came back and said, yeah, but in addition to that is a um, million dollars for stipends, athletics, and so forth. Well, when I started thinking about that. I still couldn't, is it a situation where you've cut back uh, right. those stipends? Because otherwise I can't get down to the 6% increase. So so thank you, Dan, first of all, for sending your questions ahead of time. We appreciate that. Um, but what you were comparing was the educator count and salary grid, I believe, from last year's book to this year's book. Am I correct? Correct. So in last year's book, what the salaries were fiscal 23 salaries, because we did, we were in the middle of negotiations while we were preparing last year's budget book. So you, what you're not accounting for is the 3% COLA to those salaries. Okay. So, so that would knock it from, yeah. So that would knock it from 11% down to eight. Right. Roughly. 
so and that's the base out so in fiscal 23 it's important to know base salaries alone were slightly over 29 million i think that's the number you had and you were right 29 million of base salaries in fiscal 23 but again then we negotiated a cola which again still hasn't been ratified but we've negotiated a cola which we've budgeted for in the current year's salary in the current year's budget but um, we have $350,000 of longevity, which will be hit with the COLA. We have $650,000 of stipends, and then we have almost $600,000 of athletics. So all of those things, in addition to the base, also get hit with that COLA. Okay. So then since um, when it's ratified, are you going to have retro payments Yes. for 24 and not for 23 though, right? Just retro payments in 24? For 24. We were so using you're, the base. <laughs> we were using the base of 23 to build on when we were building last year's budget book. We were using that as a guide and we told everyone we were building in a contractual obligation increase, but we really couldn't be public about what that was because we were in the oh, middle of negotiation. Oh, oh yeah, of course, of course. I get that. Um, and, I, and I think we all, none of us really pushed you against the number for that very same reason. Right. So, yes, so, you're right. So once it's ratified by both the unit and school committee, then we will be processing retro payments. Okay. So the retro payments will be paid in 24. Yes. So um, out of what funds? Is the 24 budget large enough to cover the retro payments? Yes. Okay. So can we expect anything coming back? The 24, like you did in 23, I think, was it 400,000, 300,000 came back? Yeah, ballpark. Something like that. So is the expectation now uh, 100,000 for 24 we might see coming back, or what's your best guess? So, Dan, we're really not at a point to make any kind of agreement for that or for me to even say, it's particularly when we don't even have a TA. Um, what we're hoping for, and we're, we're currently also in a budget freeze. I don't know if, if we've communicated that clearly. We have not allowed any non-salary or non-emergency purchases in over two months. We've been talking about that at school committee because we are anticipating um, everything going to finalizing the unit A contract and making sure that we're in a good place with all of our accounts. Because remember, this budget, as you know, was cut. So we want to make sure that we are uh, within that budget but we're not really um, at a point to say what our available balance is going to be in the, after the next quarter. Okay. And then I, I gave you unfairly a very last minute question um, in terms of a forecast for 26 um, and 27. Let's see, your current contracts for 24, 25, and 26. Is it three years or four years for Teachers Aid? So we negotiated two contracts which we're hoping to get ratified. The first one would be a, a current contract for this current year for fiscal 24 or one year. And then we negotiated a three year, which takes us 25, 26 and 27. Um, then Doug and I were fortunate, we're very lucky. We're gonna start negotiating with six other units in the fall for the other six um, bargaining units that we have. So that's coming. And, and um, Everyone's watching to see what the teachers are doing and the teachers are negotiating and we're fortunate. I think it's an excellent contract. We can't wait for it to be ratified. But to answer your question, yes, um, a 3% COLA is not, as you know, just a 3% increase. It actually translates to almost a five, like a 4.9. Mm -hmm. So depending on um, our teachers are uh, stay in Whitefield, um, most of our teachers, 62% are on step 12. So as that number grows, the longer people stay, right? They move down that chart, it gets a little bit more expensive. And then we have people who um, take classes, move columns because they get master's degrees, they get doctorate degrees. So they also not move a step, they also move a column. So as we grow, that 3% COLA can become six or 7%, depending on where you as a staff member falls on that grid. So do you, have, do you have a ballpark idea where you might end up with 26? So just a percentage increase. So as, as you know, our, our revenue forecast is 4%. And we're cutting capital, which, you know, Joe already chimed in, and I agree with him, we should not be cutting capital. We cut the OPEB by $400,000, which I disagree with as well. 
And that money is going to new positions throughout the, the all departments in additional costs. And we just can't keep doing that. And that's that's, that's where I'm coming from. I, I just see a train wreck coming. I can appreciate that. And I, I understand. We Doug and I have been talking about a funding cliff since COVID started. Um, I just want to make sure that people realize the school department is not asking for any new positions in this budget. I thought there we was are, two. Nope. There are no new positions in the fiscal 25 budget. No. Last year, we had two. In 24, we had two. So we are hoping to maintain what we have, what we've built um, over the past four or five years. But again, sometimes, I think we've talked about this in a couple of meetings, if a student moves into district, if we can um, support our students and keep them in district, and it means adding services, if it means adding um, a speech teacher or something like that, we have always said that we need to provide the services that our students need. So this, this budget you see before you has no new positions. Again, um, things might change for special education, but just to, to realize that we are not expanding at this time, and we're fortunate our neighboring communities are cutting positions. I'm hearing from my fellow business managers with the loss of ESSER funds that things are dire in other districts. So we are fortunate that we had the revolving accounts and the special revenue accounts that we do. But I just caution everyone on this call that after 27, we're going to be in a very different conversation. Those revolving accounts, again, we have been building budgets on one-time money, cannot sustain that after fiscal 27. And Dan, my act, my question actually fits in here, if you, okay, don't, you don't mind hitting pause for one second. So to this point mm -hmm. that Christine was just yeah. talking about, mm -hmm. on, in the packet, there's slide number um, 50, and um, there's a selected populations graph. And I, I was really blown away by the fact that in the, the graph to the right, the high needs population is listed at 33% of the total population, of which there are three... 3,500, 3,400 approximate students. So are we really saying that 33% of the students within the Wakefield Public School System are high special needs students, high need students? Like, how do we define that? Because that no. is, when I think of like controllable People costs and uncontrollable costs going forward, just to what Christine said, and sort of growth of positions and growth of budgets, that will be something that will not be able to be controlled because you have to meet the needs of your Exactly. Um, so, so are we? So, so my my question really is. So, as I sorry about that long intro. So, are we really saying thirty three percent of the population is high needs? So no. So, are you on page fifty of the budget book? Yeah. Yes. So on that, there's a graph, and that actually graph I stole from the Desi website because they published that for us. So on the left side, it's about race and ethnic. Yeah, not worried background. about that. Yep. And on the right is selected populations. Yes, so that's exactly where I am. Yes, selected population, you are right, is 33% high needs. Students with disabilities, however, is that I may, I don't know if that's the number you're talking about, is a little over 18, 19%. So, so I guess my, right. my, I think... question, my question was, is like, because high needs, I mean, I guess if you pulled it off Jesse's website, it's their definition. The, de mm -hmm. the definition of high needs is all the others combined. So we did combine, and Doug, uh, you does can it, correct does me. Does this go from like a 504 no, all no, the no. way through? No, okay. If you add the EL learner, the English language learners, yeah. and the low income, and students with disabilities, you yeah. add all those categories combined, that all combined meets, makes the high needs. Okay. So that, high needs basically, so if you're so low it's, income, it's, you it's, are high needs. If you're EL, you are high needs. That is very helpful. So it's basically A plus B plus C yes. equals D. Yes. Okay, well, because well, I was- well, well, no, no, it doesn't, but then there's overlap. So, then it, right. oh, so true, you lose true, some true. of that. You could so, be yeah. two at the same yeah. time. Because yeah. this yeah. grid went through me for an absolute positive loop, thinking yeah. that we have like, like without understanding or having any footnotes saying that there's overlap, this was very misleading to me and blew my so, mind a little so bit. They, so when they do like MCAS scores, yeah. uh, they'll basically look at like how your students with disabilities do, how your, but they also do like how your high needs population okay. does. They, they look at all those categories. Um, so, so, but that, but that's how they classify them. Okay. Because yeah. I would think about but Sorry, Doug, no, you're a guy. But thank you. Yeah. So, so when I'm looking at this, though, we look at like things that like are sort of variables that like could throw us for a loop. Your English right. is a second. Like, so, I'm sorry. If I can add, it's an umbrella term, right? Where you, where students can be represented in individual groups, but also 
be counted uh, in multiple times in the high needs group. Okay. And just as drivers though, like, I mean, when we have English, English learners or students with disabilities or those types of things, I mean, that's just, they're within SPED and you need to meet the moment, if you will. Correct. Yeah. So, but, but you made a great SPED. point. It's confusing. And, it is and very confusing. Our, <laughs> very confusing. Our budget, but in our budget book in the future, I think we can break out definitions that might help explain that. I also think too, like just and now I'm really like overriding your questions. Um, I maybe as a nerd enjoy this book a little bit, um, but it would be um, super if we had the book. I don't want to make more work for you for you folks. You're, I mean, this is quite a quite a book, but it would actually be great if there were like a two page synopsis, <laughs> and then we could pick our points to dive into the book. Uh, but nonetheless, that, that's that's for a different day. But thank you guys for indulging me. So, so you're asking for the footnote version or the, the yeah? I feel like that's the executive the, summary. The executive, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Christine, more Christine, work. You, you see what happened there? You, we, you provided enough data, and now we want a summary. Well done. Get it <laughs> exactly. Well done. That is true, Christine. Because when I was at this quite a few years ago, like we were, we were striving for something more in this vein, and now I want to go a little bit. I don't want to go backwards. But <laughs> thank you, Jim, for pointing that out. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, I have a couple of questions uh, uh, as well. Uh, Dan, did you have another one, or, or? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off. But go ahead, Jim. So I'm formulating one. Okay. So, um, actually, I have two questions. So, the Wakefield Academy, uh, you you have a seventy five thousand dollar offset going to to use, but it also talks about uh, increasing the waiver program. That's going to result in more expenses and less revenue. Um, you know, I'm not on the school committee, but you, you make those types of decisions for reasons because apparently there's a need. And again, it spoke about, and I wrote it down, increasing the waiver program was gonna result in greater expenses and less revenue. That was my take on it. But there was something in there about increasing the waiver program. Can you give me a little background on that? Again, that was in the academy section. So it's a possibility. We've yeah. talked about scholarships for families that would like to participate um, and um, what the criteria for that possibility for a scholarship is. So I think the, the term of waiver or scholarship is, is sort of the same. But what we're trying to do is because meals are free, we don't necessarily always get the free and reduced forms from families anymore. So if families um, would like to participate in Wakefield Academy, uh, we talk about what that would mean if more families are asking for waivers or scholarships to participate. But no decision. I, I put that into the narrative to highlight things that we can do for our families and for our communities, but uh, we haven't made a decision on that yet. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, it's themes like that across many budgets that, you know, worry us in a number of fashions and obviously the full-time uh, headcounts is, is a big one. My other question in the, the salary file that was presented, uh, provided by you, there are a number of lines where particularly the paraprofessionals are in there twice. Same salary, same line, same information. I should have sent you a, a question on this and I just forgot about it, but I have my notes. Just some background on that. Again, if there was $50,000, Mrs. Jones was in there twice for $50,000. So what happens is sometimes we have people who might work at multiple schools, so it's listed, but the, the salary isn't doubled. And then what happens also is the name, I don't know if it was listed twice, but they'll get a salary and they also get a stipend. When we negotiated right. the last para contract, really hard to fill positions for para professionals, we would give um, stipends for them because not all of those programs are are the same and some are a little bit more rigorous and um, need a little bit more um, training and licensure to be part of that. So we felt it was fair to offer a stipend in addition to the salaries. But if you want to send me any other questions on that, Jim, that'll be fine. Yep. Very good. Thanks. Anybody else? Yeah. Oh, I did, oh, so, oh, go ahead. Doug. I'll, I'll jump in since I haven't, I haven't been really yet. Um, Talk to me about, and I know the utilities side of it, um, but thinking about it as sort of 
as I look in at the heating fuel, uh, it, it seems bizarre. Are we going to let the kids at the Greenwood and the Doyle go cold because we're not increasing their expenses, but we're increasing the Galvin by 30 some odd percent? Like, I, I'm just I'm a little confused as to how either the principals came up with it or you all did. I would just think that you would do heating fuel as a straight line, like either everybody's going up 20 percent or everybody's going up nothing or what have well, you. I'm just not sure how that budgeting happened. No, I appreciate that. Um, so what we do is we really, I don't know if you noticed this year, we provided three years of actual expenditures by line. So yeah. we really looked closely at usage by school by line. So there's three years of actuals. Last year, I think we gave two years, but we really kind of expanded that. And the Greenwood School, it's really built really well. And for some reason, those those that school doesn't have the spike in utility classes of some of our other schools. Um, but we really looked at usage ver ver um, versus just a straight increase. We kind of, um, Tim O'Brien and I made sure that we looked at what those costs were and made forecasts for next year. We, we were really responsible because really, if you notice, other than salaries, that's the only, only line that had an increase in this budget. Greenwood also doesn't have a high cooling cost. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't have any, right? <laughs> Windows are free. <laughs> you all set, Doug? Yeah, I'm set. So, um, so I yeah. formulated my question. So I'm back to revolving accounts for a minute. So in 22, the sum of the balances was 2.8 million. In 23, it was about 3.3 .3 million. For 24, it's going to be about 3.5 million. And then for 25, you have a reduction down to about 3.2, I think, when I added it up. But historically, prior to 22, it was about a million dollars or less. Now, I noticed in the forecast, you're bringing it down over time, over the next four or five years. Is there any chance of reducing it a little faster? In other words, taking some of the reductions that you have in 26, 27, 28, and moving to 25 to help us out? So, so the forecast is over three years, Dan. It's from twenty five to twenty eight, and, and you know we we built in a range there of what we could uh, bring down, and so, and we thought we were as aggressive as we could be. So, so how do you explain that from from twenty twenty back to twenty sixteen? It was two hundred twenty five thousand dollars or less. How is it that it became three million versus about two and a quarter? Three twenty one. That's what I'm struggling with. So I think we explained fully each revolving account and the narrative of how it built up over time, particularly during the pandemic, and how oh, yeah. each program was dramatically affected by that. Yep, I recall all that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just trying to say it's a revolving account. So what I'm struggling with is why do we need to have, have such large balances if year to year you're supposed to be approximately spending what you receive? That's that's my struggles. So, I mean, we've talked about this for, for this is a couple of years now, Dan, and I think uh, the, the reason the book was expanded and the reason we're creating offsets and the reason we're forecasting over the number of years that we are uh, is to, to address the questions that you asked last year. Right. And so there was an influx of, of revenues due to COVID related um, grants and COVID related reimbursements. And so um, we were fortunate, like the town was, all municipalities had an increase during that time. Um, and, and we're looking at kind of offsetting costs and spending those down um, and making prudent decisions over time that we, we think we can sustain. Yeah, so you're going to the go slow approach. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, just on that note, I did see in the book also uh, school lunch program. You know, after 2028, without additional state funding, you know, you you're not going to be able to continue to do the offset. I think it said or something to that effect. Is that right? That's what we believe, Jim. I, you yeah. know, I, we're we're gonna. That's you know, Christine's approach and and kind of addressing this at the end of the year, at the end of the fiscal year. I think is a, a really prudent way for us to really be thoughtful about, you know, how we can create offsets and and what we can pick up for costs. But yeah, over time, I, we don't know that it's sustainable. 
Yeah, it, it's it's unfortunate or fortunate. You're sort of saying the same thing that Dan said early in the meeting. Uh, you know, whether you're here or not, they, you know, we're we don't just see our our overall budgets being sustainable without additional revenue sources or obviously reduction in expenses. And uh, so that's unchanged. I appreciated the uh, the additional offsets. I did clearly appreciate the write up. I, I read it all over, as I'm sure a lot of people did. So, um, not having any new additional positions is important in my mind. Uh, and the school lunch program, you've had to hire a number of people over the years, and that because it's free now. And uh, I don't know, I, you, you get state money for it, but it's not enough state money, Doug. Uh, I think you tried to explain that to me before. Yeah, no, you know, you know, labor for us is a real issue. Labor for us and turnover is a real issue, especially in food service and 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 a number of our bargaining units. Um, you know, we met with our our legislators and we we talk about this and they talk about the need to put people to work. Um, but what's often absent from those conversations are, you know, school personnel, teachers, um, hard to fill positions. Um, our food service program, it is it's tough to hire staff at that at that weight, at that rate, you know, that rate of pay. Um, and so so we have had really high turnover, but you know, I think we're doing Dustin, o, Dustin O'Brien, our new, our new director, he's, he's in year two. He's, I think, doing a really solid job for us and, and kind of going after any additional resources that we can, saving where we can. Um, and also he's been creative and, and filling positions, but it's tough. So yes, Jim. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Thanks for everybody that attended in person or on the uh, on the Zoom. Appreciate the time tonight. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Show some passion. It's the challenge in CPA and me. I cannot. <laughs> if only I had the little tabs. So do we have uh, articles to look at, Steve? Uh, I, I think you have one more budget to look at. I'm sorry. The town council budget number one. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> I vote we increase it to two million dollars. There you go. go hey, on. Butler, I heard that. I think Dan wants it out of open. <laughs> Who's going to speak on this, please? Kevin's going to start. I'll do a quick overview. Uh, town council budget where. Recommending an increase of one hundred twenty-five thousand twenty dollars over the current fiscal year. This increase breaks down one hundred twenty thousand eight fifteen to the tax levy, four thousand two hundred and five dollars to a water sewer and insurance transfer. Uh, there is an increase in personal services in this budget, one hundred eighteen thousand six hundred fifteen dollars, which includes contractual and negotiated increases. It also includes a new position. Uh, assistant town administrator at $100,000. This budget also includes the positions of community and economic development director, Aaron Bikinda, the communications director, Jen McDonald, the uh, new strategic and growth development position, Samantha Elliott. Uh, on the expense side, we have several small increases, $1,000 to office supplies, $1,000 to the environmental sustainability line item, and $200 the uh, dues and subscriptions. Uh, total budget request for fiscal 25, $706,455, with 618,135 coming from tax levy, 88,310 coming from a water sewer and insurance transfer. Uh, I do wanna point out that we do collect revenue in this department. We collect uh, over $125,000 a year. Uh, the big ticket item in there is the uh, liquor licenses. Okay, very good. Any other comments uh, from you or Steve? Okay, the, question. okay. Um, the um, new assistant town administrator position, and, and this was in the memo that I sent you, um, probably wouldn't take effect until um, mid-year. Mid-year, mid that's why it's 100,000. I'd love to think that we could hire an assistant for 100,000, but that's not what the market is. Um, 
uh, we would, uh, you know, my plan is um, to um, first hire a, um, a, a, a senior accountant, someone that Kevin can uh, train, uh, because within the next few years, probably, you know, two to three years or somewhere, I always say it's between zero and two to three years, um, uh, both Kevin and I will probably be gone golfing more. Maybe I don't ski, but maybe looking from the lodge a little bit. And we really need to talk about um, succession planning. This is something that the council has talked to me about a long time. Um, but I do, I do um, recognize that the hardest position to hire, um, I think, in municipal government is a town is a town accountant. Um, chief financial officer type of position. So the thought was is that we would bring in someone to kind of learn the ropes from Kevin, um, who is a legend in this whole area, in my opinion, um, the best one out there. Um, uh, have, 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 have in mind? No, I don't. Oh. Well, I have Kevin. In, no, I, I don't. I don't. That'd be up to Kevin. Um, and then start to move forward with succession planning. I think we've had a good success over the last 15 years, and we want to keep this going for the for the community, so that's why, that's why that's in there. If you didn't have that in there this year, um, you're looking at a ho hum four percent in this budget, and um, that's where I am. Happy to answer any questions. Very good. And town council deliberated this. I didn't watch the 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 information, yep. but obviously it was approved Monday night. Yep, it was approved Monday night. Thank you. Questions. Uh, another full time position. Another. <laughs> yes. Well, another full time position, and then you know potential second one that he's talking about, and not cheap ones, a CF assistant CFO and assistant mm -hmm. town administrator. Is would this plan be to have this you know as a potential successor? Would we keep this? Does this position stay on the books? Do we think? Do we think we need? Is there a need for an assistant town administrator with an existing town administrator who is not a couple of, a few, three to five years? I'll give you three to five. Giving me three to five? I'm telling you uh, <laughs> okay. where we would budget for it for three to five. Um, so I guess, do you think, are these, is this a position, are both these positions long-term? Or are I they three that, I think that if you look at the communities around us, if you look at the, the the communities most communities have more people at this level than we do most people most communities have an assistant town administrator town very near to us which is twenty eight thousand. it's a town like us um they have how is that i don't know makes a difference north andover uh, they, they well, they have an assistant and a deputy. Actually, North Andover is yeah. not that much richer yeah. than us. I don't even think they, they might not be richer than us. No, they have an assistant and a deputy. Okay. Um, you know, um, Reading had an assistant um, and, a, and a town manager. The assistant did move up. I don't know. I imagine they're going to hire an assistant again. But that they just went through that. It's not unusual. No, and I, I yeah. by the way, I was thinking I was thinking of this before because it's not just and I'm not and, and I said to town council, I'm not complaining right. myself, but no, I, just, no, no. I think it's I, I'd love I, to have someone come in, learn the ropes, learn it with Kevin and I and so to make sure to ask the question different a little slightly different. There's in this budget there are six full time positions. Long term, I'd say three years from now, four years from now, it'll still be six. In this budget, so I only count Sherry once. Yeah. You're you're counting. Are you counting the assistant? Got count? Steve, Aaron, Sharon, Jennifer, Sharon. the assistant, assistant, and Samantha. That's six. Yes, I would I would say long term you could look at six. At six. At the same number that's here. Yes. Right. Right. Which sort of answers your question. Yeah, so that 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 answers that question. But that again, all those decisions down the road are somewhat are all budget. Everything's budget driven, right? A lot of things could change. Well, I worry some about, you know, it's not, it's you two and, I mean, I don't know, how long is, is Tom Mullen also like on? 
Um, I, I think. What do we have? I, we have I think Tom Mullen little... loves his job more than we do. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'll never leave. Well, that's, you know, you think of like, you know, all of the senior folks, and granted, senior yeah. folks are always, you know, generally later tenured, longer right. tenured later in their career. But I do worry that we have like, you know, a yeah. bunch that we have. I, McCarthy is what. Right. I'm, I've, I've talked to. Um, I'm not the, clear, no. I've, 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 no. I've, I've talked with. Um, the town council for a couple of years about this and we have our retreat and each year or maybe more than that each year i've put up succession planning and in the first year they said what are you talking about succession planning for and i said to them well probably within this was you know within five years at the time you'll see a lot of your senior people gone town clerk that's an elected position but it's an important position um uh T town accountant or chief financial officer as he is, town administrator, um, probably the treasurer. I mean, we're all around the same age. We're all going to be, you know, mid-60s. Yeah. It, it's a real uh, issue because one of the things you know, Massachusetts had a while ago is considered an early retirement window. Yeah. And one of my clients was looking to put in a window, but they said, we're not putting in a window at all because we have – Six of our top department heads are all would be eligible for a nice yeah. bump. We're not doing it because we don't want six yeah. senior people walking out the door the same day. Yeah. It'd be a disaster. I think in a lot of other departments, though, you do have succession in place and you have a, a younger workforce that'll be here for a long time. So it's really the financial area that's, and I include myself in that. That's yeah, DPW is. DPW, and, and there's, you know, uh, a great staff, police, fire. You have um, library. She could be library, library right? Um, great assistant, though. So perhaps, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so that that's an issue, obviously. It is an issue. Every organization. So what's the real cost? Because you said it's not a hundred grand to hire this. Person. Oh, I think that eventually, if you had a full time, um, you know, you would be in the one eighty ish range at today, maybe more. So we're going from, this is a suggestion. So you're saying, you know, you're at two and a quarter. Right. And the assistant is at 180. So we're going to be for, moving for 26, senior yeah. administrators up to 400, four, 450 and 26. That's a suggestion. Yeah. Not unrealistic. And yeah, I, I guess the only other issue that I might have with this is the notion of us hiring in it or That think putting in a succession plan as an assistant town administrator. Uh, now, full disclosure, one of the reasons for why I'm running is to help with that role, but also that I'm not sure that the town council should be abdicating your successor to you. Correct, but that 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 would not be the case, okay. or may not be the case. They may like the person. Yeah. So. And and my thought would that would be first would be Kevin, and Kevin would be here for a while. He's not going to be here for, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, we may both be gone together. <laughs> I mean, you don't know. But, but I think we have to start building that into the budget and talking about it and and moving forward. Very good, Joe. And, but the town accountant is more important to me. Filling that and, and getting some money. Who else to? No, I. <laughs> Joe, Joe, thank you for your patience. Go ahead. Yeah, the question I had had to do with the um, that director of strategic growth and development. Is that the position that was created by the ARPA funds last year? Yes. And is that going to be covered by ARPA funds this year? This year, a portion of it is because um, I was not gonna be happy I can't. with the first round of um, uh, interviews. Um, so we, we did ended up hiring, which I think was an excellent hire later in the year. So those opera funds that weren't used, I'm going to roll over for that contract. And how much is that? 74,000. 74,000. It's in the, okay, it's that's on the 74 that's there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. But then after that, we're going to be on the hook for the whole thing. Absolutely. Yes. And then we're going to be on the hook for an assistant town manager. And if, an assistant if, account. If you so decide, to yes. Continue to cut capital outlay every year. Is that capital the outlay, the $2 million, you should be thrilled. That's a great amount. It was zero. We, I needed that to come in this year at around $2 million, uh, which it did. 
We've spent a lot of money on capital through OPAR and all the buildings that you're involved in. So I don't think we've been skimping capital. Well, my own I, opinion. <laughs> and I respectfully disagree. <laughs> well, maybe not respectfully. <laughs> Understood. Thanks, okay. Joe. Ed. On OPRA, the Treasury regs just changed yeah. last week, which is going to give you a little bit more flexibility to carry positions on OPRA beyond. Oh, Ed, Ed, I did not see those. Will you send them to me? Yeah, this is big. <laughs> this is I, I just had to speak before the city council here in several tonight. Uh, so you can carry forward these staff positions on OPRA beyond the, the end of this calendar year, which is really good news. Um, my other comment is I'm a city auditor. It's extremely difficult to fill financial positions. I've never seen it like this. So I just want to bolster what Steve is saying on that. You've got to really think about recruiting somebody to fill this role of town accountant or whatnot when when you know Kevin leaves or whatnot. It's going to be very, very difficult. Very good. Thanks, Ed. I mean, I, I would say over the last, I, I don't like asking for employees, and I haven't added many over the last 15 years, in my opinion. Um, you know, it's it's a person here or there. We're at the point in some of these that we asked for tonight that it's it's time. It's time, in my opinion. I just wish we had the money. Well, we saved it all those years. Any other comments? <laughs> He run out. <laughs> Pitchforks. And... <laughs> All right. That's the last of the budgets, I believe, Steve, correct? That is the last of the budgets. Thank you. And uh, I, I will say this is I, I get it. I look at Dan's forecast. I talked with Dan about his forecast. Probably ad, na ad nauseum for Dan and I and Kevin talk about it a lot. Um, but I do think that if you do look at, you know, this was a, kind of a year where the safer grant went away. And I know Doug's going to talk about that. Um, you know, <laughs> we had some other opera things that that went away. We made a, a decision at the town council level not to use any additional ARPA funds for budgeting. And we did kind of wean them out um, over the last three years. And we talked about that. Um, but if you pull out a lot of these things um, that aren't going to be repeat, um, the town side came in closer to 4%. A little over four, four point one, four point two. Kev, would you say? Yeah. Um, we would have all been very happy with that if that was the whole thing. It would have been great if we yeah. ended up there. But sometimes. Steve, so the uh, the summary. I don't have the summary in front of me. So now we're at the end of the budgets. What was the total increase of all budgets? Uh, Excellent. Tax levy increase was quiet. Thirty-five. Five point three. Five point three five. Yes. Five point three percent. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's, All right. Um, no if you, uh, Jim, if you have the forecast in front of you, it's um, it's on the grand totals page. Yep. Thanks. Okay. That's it for budgets, I believe. Correct. That is. I will say so, this on the town, like the tax levy piece and the uh, and the uh, and the spending piece. We've you know we've increased tax levy only like four point one, whereas our uh, our spending's grown at four point six. I think over the past ten years. And over the last five, it's yeah, been four point three. Yeah, but revenue is three point three over yeah. the last five. Yeah, we've been consistently one percent short of revenue to expense. But that's the and then on the return side. Really on the re on the financial return at the end of the year, how much is that? Typically. Oh, well, that's been very good. A million dollars in 24, according to Kevin. And that's what? Is that 1%? Yeah. Yeah. About. about well, but then more, I'm dropping it down to 500,000 after that. 
Because healthcare will be more this year, yeah. a little bit more than a million. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stone Ice and yeah. Yeah. Reserve Fund. Stone Ice, a little bit Reserve Fund. Yeah, it's yeah, so a little over yeah. a million for 24. I think for 25, um, excuse me, I think for 24, I think it's going to be more than that. Be more than a million? Way more. Probably at least one and a half. At least one and a half. One and a half? For 20, for this fiscal year. Yeah. Oh, I don't have that in here. Huh? Oh, we didn't tell you everything. I wish you did. <laughs> I well, that was going to be my point. Is I'm, Doug, going with, I'm going with Kevin's number. But I think it's going to be more. <laughs> you know, as Doug said, uh, on the budget versus revenue, we, we're always, you know, budget is higher than the revenue, and then we get returns. And I'm not yeah. expecting this to happen infinitely, but right. th th this is how we continue to, quote unquote, get by, I guess, right? Next year, though, because of health insurance. Right. right. The health insurance right. we use. Next year, next year, I just have a half a million. Right. For everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, should we move to the articles, which was in your uh, memo, cool. Steve? What should yeah, what... we can do that so we can at least get everything out there, and then you can decide what you want to do, Mister Tammen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so there was a PDF from Steve with the memo format with an explanation at the beginning, and then uh, you know how things looked. Good summary, and then. Uh, it went into the articles. So, so I'll, I'll jump in so Kevin can save his voice. Um, indemnification. Um, this article comes up often for um, uh, medical expenses for injuries suffered by um, on-duty police and fire personnel. Um, and these are handled in this manner because um, they're not under workers' compensation insurance. And if they were, that would be a huge insurance bill um, every year. So um, you see this, uh, you know, and it's an article, so we can use it going, you know, carrying over to the next year. We're looking for 20, 80, total of 80,000, 25 for police and 55 for fire. Did you want to add? Oh, no, Kevin's good. Questions on that? Continue. Uh, supplemental budget. I think we talked about, I know we talked about this and we talked about the fire budget. Um, that um, we have, uh, you know, because of um, injuries and sicknesses and minimum manning, they're needing to make sure that we uh, service the town. Um, and although we could use a reserve fund transfer this for this, I kind of feel that what if something happens between now and the uh, end of the year? So I like doing with the supplemental budget, uh, looking for 350 out of free cash. And then what would happen is we probably would use very little of the um, uh, uh, reserve fund, and then that would just roll back to free cash. So it's three and a quarter for um, overtime expenses and 25000 for uh, expenses um, on some of the vehicles, I believe. Comments? Dennis? Uh, I believe that's mostly driven by the recent retirement that we uh, had. Uh, retirements and injuries. Um, uh, Illnesses, um, that's really what's driving it. Retirement is part of it. Uh, you, you, when you have a senior person retire, I've got to promote someone to a provisional, like a lieutenant retires. We've got to move someone up before it all goes through. So it's a combination of both, but it, uh, it is retirement is part of it, Dennis. Yeah, I, I know, you know, Phil retired, Preston, right. unexpectedly. So that, it, yeah. that I hit. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Uh, debt service. Um, this is another annual uh, payment. Um, uh, debt service, uh, 3.2 million or so is exempt and 2 million is not exempt, meaning the 3.2 million is for the debt exclusionary projects like um, the Galvin and the high school project. That number will go up. And I think we've, um, nice thing about that, it's part of the debt exclusion anyway, so you don't have to worry about it, uh, but it will go up. <laughs> Ed, Ed, how much is the um, high school of that amount? Uh, Kevin will find that for you. Only in trouble. You got him. What was that? Kevin's trying to find the high schools. Thank you. Okay. And of 
course, it's going to go up. No question about right. that. But <laughs> I'll tell you this, Ed. We're going to have a big borrowing on the high school yeah. in September. Okay. Uh, so I think in fiscal hopefully in fiscal, rates will be a little bit better. Well, then. that's what I'm hoping. We're hoping that Doug can bring them down for us. We're counting on him. <laughs> <laughs> I should have borrowed all that money when I borrowed before, right, Doug? Even though I didn't have a project, you told us borrowed, <laughs> borrowed up to our eyeballs. What 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 number do you have for your debt service? Is it the same two six four eight two million six forty eight? What do you have for debt service? Uh, Five million three fifty nine eight eighty, and that includes everything. That includes, you know, I guess that, that includes everything. That includes exempt and non-exempt. Uh, the exempt is three three million two, and I want to say I'm using two point six four eight as in that. We didn't break it out between Galvin and. Well, Kevin, I don't need it right now. I'm okay. Gonna, yeah. At some point, I'm, I'm going to be very interested to see the borrowing on the high school and uh, yep. back to, on the long long term. Yes. Yeah. So, so actually, last year, for example, I used two million eight fifty eight for twenty four. It's it's three million. Yes. Three million seventy six. Three million seventy six. That's what it sounds like to me. Right, because three million seventy six. But we do two million seventy six because we then don't appropriate. Right, the, we don't uh, appropriate the full. Right. So if I put okay, so I'll put in three million seventy six thousand. Yes, right. that's probably a better. Yeah. Wow. Well, I just heard us some more. Lord, Yo, from the Lord, take it yeah. away. <laughs> Steve, where is it reflected these reimbursements that we're getting now? What reimbursements? From the high school, I've been signing the things we're reimbursed, getting reimbursements. Have we received oh, them? You mean, oh, you mean from the state? Yes. Okay, so so we only we borrow the difference. Okay, so we're we we don't borrow the whole amount like right. we used to. So the reimbursements from the state go to pay the bills, and that all gets worked out. But that's not in these figures here. It's not in the debt service fund. No, it's not in the debt service. No. We should probably have some like a separate because of the huge number that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, You're talking about the SBA reimbursements. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking for the future because the number is going to be quite large. And I'm every month I sign these things and I always wondered if, the, if they ever get there. Yeah. So we, we've been working with, um, um, the um, OPM and bond council, we actually have a schedule that shows when, you know, construction schedule, but when we need to borrow. So that's why yeah. there is a big bubble coming through. In There's going to be a big, we're going to be borrowing, but, but that is tax exempt. So it doesn't, um, right. it matters, but it's not. And by June, we'll have the guaranteed, the GMP, the guaranteed maximum. Price. That'll, that'll help too. Yeah. The, uh, while we are talking, if I may, about uh, debt service, um, uh, this will mainly help on the um, exempt side. We are looking towards maybe refunding one of the later bonds under Galvin that we did for the Galvin School. Um, we've been working with, um, I want to say Hilltop Securities. I think Hilltop or First Southwest, I forget. It used to be First Southwest. First Southwest, Hilltop. Um, we look at that a lot. And there is one of the later borrowings that we did that we could refund and would save an, int and save an interest over the remaining life of it, you know, 800,000 or, you know, I'm, I'm hoping rates come down a little bit more and re refund it and that might save, you know, 900 or a million bucks. It's a nice bonus to have there and we look at those numbers every month but i'm waiting for doug to tell me what to do he's the financial guy yeah we'll be lucky to see one rate hike i can say that on behalf of doug one rate drop i hope one, one rate, rate drop. drop sorry we don't want to hike <laughs> don't want any hikes <laughs> i know that but people are talking about hikes so it's not going to be a hike well the hikes don't matter to you it's more it's just 
they don't the the short term rates are not driving this, but the concern is if inflation right. is persistent, rates have gone up fifty basis points right. this month. So it's not I good. Go, I needed to go the other way. I know. I know. You need, you need the number to come in at one percent next. Sure, I'm going to need a new DSR spreadsheet. Yep. Twenty five. It just says straight three million. All right. Uh, oh. Moving on to the right of way wall easement. Yeah, that that is because it is for one dollar. Um, it is a um, right of way that the uh, it's it's a um, retaining wall easement um, on the corner of Hickory Hill and Greenwood Street. And when the developer came in to do something there, the Board of Appeals said, you know, hey, you can one of your conditions is going to be to um, give us a easement if we do sidewalks there. Because um, we need a retaining wall, because I think if you know where that is, it kind of we don't want falling into the sidewalk. So, um, because it is a one dollar cost, um, just like our ombudsman, our our other one, I do put that out to the FinCom because it is a dollar. It is a dollar. It is a dollar. So we're going to have two eminent domains. Two eminent. Well, two basically two. Two. Yeah. For each for a dollar. Yeah, two each for a dollar. Yeah. Okay. The regular one that. Tommy Mullen never lets us use yeah. <laughs> this one that we <laughs> after. Okay. Just added that dollar in. Yeah. Okay. Earth's more. It's one more. more. We and might then, not spend it. And then the uh, MDLD. Oh, right. Um, if we can save the dollar amount on that one. MGLD too. pilot program is, um, do you have that? Yeah, 974, 415. So um, the light department pays us um, payment in lieu of taxes, and it's nine seventy four four fifteen for the next fiscal year. That is an increase of one and a half percent over last year. <clears throat> Not enough. Not saying anything more. <laughs> oh well. I think Jimmy froze. Did you freeze, Jim? Yeah. I no, I didn't freeze. I, I okay. don't have anything else to say about uh, it either. <laughs> Highway robbery. <laughs> and um, that is it. I will give you a very quick update in contracts. Um, very close with one union. Um, I may ask you to um, come back and approve that contract uh, before town meeting. That's my hope. Um, not so close with one of the other unions. So, so I'm, I'm putting it on the first. You you have actually putting in uh, a, a guesstimate about fifty to sixty five thousand dollars as an impact on the um, one contract. I don't know how much the other contract might be. Similar. Not similar. Yeah, yeah, it might be a smaller group. Though. Yeah, so yeah. we might be having to add another $100,000 to the deficit. Okay. But I also think having all of our contracts settled is you really. Yeah. And I think in a few years, it's gonna be much more difficult personal. Okay. That's it. Thank you guys for listening to every budget. I appreciate it. So can you add me now? And yeah. Oh, yes, I can add you. Any, now. Uh, any comments, uh, additional comments? We go, we can open it up in a minute. Dan, we got one, uh, one set of uh, finance committee meeting minutes to approve. I'll move approval. Oh, Dan, any second? Second. Dennis seconds it. So we're looking at the uh, finance committee meeting minutes from uh, 328 24. Any discussion? All those in favor of the finance committee minutes 328 24, raise your hand. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Dan, you want to go over the uh, forecast and then uh, we'll likely yeah. vote next week. If everything works, this should pop up. Ah, look at that. I'm Modern using science. My, yeah, well, I'm using my phone as a hotspot, so let's hope it hangs on. Yeah, Mayo's got the IT guys clamping down. We can't get on that stuff. I know. What the hell? So um, given the new number for the debt service and um, the new information we received today from on the other budgets and so forth, we're now looking at a deficit this year for 25 of $1.4 million, this 1394 figure. Um, 
And what it does going forward, of course, is it continues to increase slightly, you know, pretty much 1.5, call it, throughout the forecast. Uh, that deficit does not include um, the library and clerical unions settling. And if it is 100,000 between the two of them, um, add 100 grand to all those numbers. And then what it does for our free cash is right now we're forecasting roughly $10 million. Nice number for the end of 24. And then it starts going down after that because obviously we're deficit spending all the way through. I increased this line, this item, the 1.5 million, it used to be a million. Based on Kevin and, and uh, Steve's comments here five minutes ago, we think we'll have a million five coming back rather than a million, which is what I had before. Um, if you look at our reserves, our magic 10%, we're at 11.8 at the end of 24, and then we start going down. Um, and Jim, I think we're still okay by saying we're roughly at 10% for three years, and then we're not. So um, that's where we stand right now on the forecast. I should also indicate in my results the assumptions I'm using. For example, I didn't get much out of Christine. I'm using 5% for 26. I think a better number is probably 5% for 27, given it's a, four, a one year plus a three year. That's gonna make things a little worse. Um, and also on the regional schools, I've got a 15% for 25, 15 for 26. I'm gonna bet on no, the 4% for 27 should be okay. I think that's gonna be okay. So uh, can I point out on the VOC, the VOC, and this may be good news, just like we got extra money, uh, an increase from the state on the reimbursement rate, right. so to the vocational school, that may help us a little bit. But I leave your numbers where they were, where they are. Where they are. I'd be um, pleasantly right. surprised that maybe that 15 is a 13. Right. So. Um, in 25, do we have anything going in the stabilization account? Not at this point. What right. about the uh, what about that SPED stabilization? Do we need to bring that back up? The 300,000? No. Where is it at now? 300,000. 308? Yeah. Where, and that's where we wanted it, not at a half a million, right? I don't think we can afford to. I, I'm just asking where. I, it, I, would, it can... I, I, I would agree with you, uh, Jim, that, that that would be great to have that money, uh, that account higher, if it wasn't a lot of circuit breaker money for years gone by that is still available. And I think when you look at that, there's probably a lot of circuit breaker money that's could be tapped into. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't look too hard for it, Dan. I was just wondering what the number was at. I had written a note to ask. Right. Yeah, so if if I if I take if I delete the stabilization, um the deficit is 1.2 million for 25 if we if we decide not to put that in. And that would be something we'd put in fall town meeting. Fall town meeting. We did. Right, yeah. Um we're still at 1.4, but now because I've made a change to um the other assumption on the schools, our deficit is more like $2 million versus $1.5 million because of uh, extra half a percent to the schools, or 1%, and we've from four to five. Right. Yeah. So we're and still Dan, in this year, uh, Donna, I asked you this question and you answered it. I'm just confused. On the free cash for this year, um, like in 23, you show a negative uh, 2.3. Right. In 24, there's no use of any money? Correct. So what I so what I did with um, 24 have a, um, yeah, no zero, but because I used 995 of free cash, the 24, but that 995 is was just to balance this to a zero. Okay, and no, down below, you don't need to show that being used is my point. Right, because it's part of the 1.5 million. Got it. Thank you. So, I mean, where I'm coming from this is what, you know, we cut OPEB by 400,000, we cut capital, um, and everybody else is going up some a lot. We've lost grant money. Um, it's a bit of a storm. I'm not going to call it a perfect storm, but because we had that in 2008 and 2009. Right. 
Yeah, nothing will top that. Nothing will top that, and we <laughs> survived. We survived. <laughs> stronger. <laughs> um, this is this is a it's a small hurricane, Cat One, um, but we do have. Um, we, we're not looking real good right now. We're better than a lot of communities. I, I agree with that sentiment, but that doesn't help us. No, I think somebody uh, coined it before. I mean, we've got a spending problem, not a not a revenue problem. And, yeah. You know, and it, I, I don't know. I just think the, uh, I, I continue to ask Steve and, and, and we all, you know, we want the most accurate budget available, you know, and we get several million back or a million and a half back, uh, you know, that's not, you know, it's 1%, I guess, right? It's not a huge number, but uh, if we get better at budgeting, we're going to get less back, right, Dan? So it just, it, it, it just continues to look bleak. So. Well, I also think we've, we've, ex we've typically beaten forecast for growth. Um, if you go back and you, you know, Dan's got the actual figures in here, but if you go back and you look like we've probably tended to be under shooting. Yeah, I actually have a spreadsheet on that, uh, that I was looking at for my own benefits. And, uh, of course I probably won't have it with me, but it was I mean, yeah. for a long time. Yeah. We never got it in. Right. I, I think the one area that we didn't beat new growth was the, um, uh, National grid pipeline. Well, fiscal 23, we missed right. it because it, they didn't it get it in, yeah. but we right. got a lot more right. of this past right. year. Right. But if we had got it a year before, it would have been great because. Yeah, no, we would have double counted. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. going yeah. to grow on that. But, so, so yeah. Victor hasn't given us a number for 25 for new growth. Has. No. 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 So, no. So, I want to so, say the average is coming in about 120% of that number, Dan, uh, uh, Doug. Yeah. yeah. So, I Actually, mean, I, it, but. I got it right here. Uh, the last four years, it's been about 14% higher. It's come in at 14.3 over the last four years. In FY23, it came in 21% higher. Budget to actual. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a million four in there for 25. And I welcome any feedback on quality of that number. Yeah, I... I'm looking at these two guys across the table from me. <laughs> right. We, we, I don't have anything to give you at this point. I will say this. Um, when does the head of the lake hit? Well, it's just they just pulled the permits. So, it's so on, that's so a great fee of a million dollars in permitting fees or more. Right. That's going to show up, which will help with our, you know, our, our, our receipts, our local receipts at the end of the year. Um, but I'm sorry, the number I just quoted was complete local receipts. Uh, Kevin had provided me the information. So that includes what, Kevin? Local receipts, a yeah. lot of stuff. Uh, the the right. two big ones, are, three big ones now are motor vehicle excise, about $4 million. Yeah. Uh, building the permits uh, will be better this year because we got the head of the lake. Meals and hotels, about a million. Yeah, uh, yeah. so again, it's, it's, it keeps going up. Yeah. It's yeah. not uh, new construction, it's all local receipts, so. Right. Right. That number that I referred to. I, I, I am cautious, cautiously optimistic that on motor vehicle excise tax, um, with these new developments, there will be more cars. I know a lot of people say people aren't going to have cars, but they're going to have cars. Yeah. So there, there, will be, there will be more cars. So that will help a little bit going forward um, with our local receipts as well. Steve, what do you... To... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, Steve, what are you, what's your view of the uh, Municipal um, Empowerment Act? I mean, is, is, do you think the legislature will approve these local options? Um, I, I hear mixed bags from people up there um, that people don't, it's a tax, it's a tax, it's a tax. Um, yeah. But it's going to, be, if, assuming that it does get passed, um, it is going to give us the option to charge more. Right for excise taxes, to charge more for local option meals taxes, to charge well, more for local option hotel. Those yeah. two, I think I would be apt to do more than excise person. Yeah, the motor vehicle excise is not a popular tax. Yeah. Yeah. No. And then there's the transfer. There's the transfer fee of properties being sold over a million dollars and whether that just could be used locally. Yeah. I think it's a lot of stuff that needs to be flushed out. I'm really more, uh, what I really want to see, though, is the um, 
local um, is, is the streaming bill for uh, cable because that would help, you know, yeah. uh, make sure that, uh, you know, the local cable company doesn't come in and we got to make a decision whether we want to help them. I'm, I'm not sure that the transfer fee will end up in the general fund, though, Steve. Uh, two, up, right? the, the, the law that comes out says, right, well, the law that's on the books right now, one-fifth goes to the state, two-fifths go to the local cable um, company, and two-fifths goes to the general fund. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, and you still have the uh, millionaire's tax that the schools got very little from, right? It's it all like went to transportation point. this year? I don't think they used much of that at all for um, at this point. The state has not uh, moved that towards schools, correct? Okay. At this point, I don't think this year they did. No. But there's still some part of the process. Is so, yeah. Okay. Maybe the House is using some of that to pay the extra money on the Chapter 70, mm -hmm. which would be a good thing to do. Okay. Keep Any other comments? Keep wanting to scroll this up. I see my last screen. What do you want? Okay. No, I keep wanting to do it. I think, oh, why yes. is it moving? Because I'm the one doing it. You're the one doing it. <laughs> I think if you go down to this, you keep going down a little bit. So down here, cash. the free cash and, and the percentages. Um, and Dan was right to point out in 2008. Uh, that wasn't anywhere near there. So um, I think for some, it, it, there's always something new that comes down the pike too. Let's hope so. Yes. Yeah. All right. I mean, I mean, we'll be able to survive a couple of years. Oh, then, then what? We'll see what happens. Yeah, there's, there's more than a couple. Yeah, it's a few years, but there's just, yeah. The headcount just keeps going up uh, in, in so many, not, Tonight only. It's just grown like you described, Dan. It's just, it, it's not going to work. <laughs> not going to work. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and we could be looking at the end of 26 at less than our reserve policy. Right. Uh, I'm going to bet no. Stay yeah, but I don't it. think it's going to be three years, Steve. <laughs> I might have to adjust my forward a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. right now it looks like you got uh, 25 and 26 if you want to round it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I'd say right. 27 too would know, be my guess. But that's okay. All right. You're retired. <laughs> no, no, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to get on the finance committee if you retire. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I can I can re replace Doug. <laughs> there you go. It's not looking like anybody's going to be replacing Doug. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. Any other comments, committee? Dan, thanks for the update. Thanks for keeping that in front of everybody. All right. We'll be voting next Wednesday night, seven o'clock. You don't want to vote now? No. Okay. You're the chair. <laughs> seven o'clock. Pardon me. Seven o'clock. So I'll I'll make a move um, motion to adjourn at uh, eight fifty four. Thank you much. I'll second that. Thank you, Evan. Nice try. I tried. I wasn't quick enough. <laughs> All, right, All so those in favor night, of adjourning. Aye. Right. Anyone opposed? All right, Steve, thanks for accommodating next week. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for all.